Okay, folks. Ridge Outdoor Gears Pinnacle Flat Lay Hammock. This thing here is going to make these people the king. <laughs> Hello, everybody. If you're like me and you like budget equipment, this is something that you're really going to love. This thing is impressive. Um, I saw two videos on this thing, one by Bumblebee Hikes and the other one by Spagiver, and it was, I was sold. <laughs> it was that, it's that, it was, looked that good there, and this is every bit what those two people have been saying it was. Anyhow, it's an 11-foot hammock at a very budget price. This thing comes in at under $50. It includes the, the hammock itself and a detachable bug net. It has a uh, ridge line organizer in there. Um, of course, it's got a ridge line in it too. It has the straps for it, and it has the uh, uh, carabiners, and it's got decent carabiners. The straps are the newer style straps we're seeing. This is a 10 foot strap, but see how small and light this is? This thing comes in at uh, seven ounces, a little over seven ounces for the, the set. And this comes in at 23 ounces or 20, between 23 and 24 ounces is what I weighed it at for the, uh, the entire hammock assembly. So it's very, very light for what it is. It's 11 feet long, 58 inches wide, and uh, it's impressive. I'm very impressed with it. I can go on anymore here. Let's get this thing out on the patio. Let's get it hung up and show you what we got. Well, there it is. We got it set up. It's a very sweet looking design. It's very, very nice. Looks very attractive. It doesn't look uh, cheap cheese or anything like that. I've, I've seen a lot of very expensive hammocks that didn't even look this nice. Here's the suspension. It has 10 of these little loops in a daisy chain. And it has, as you can see here, I've got it wrapped up around a pole there about three or four times because it's uh, a very narrow pole. And this area that I usually hang the hammocks in hangs a 10-foot hammock real nicely. I had a make concessions to get an 11 footer in here it makes a difference uh, with the last hoop here and the same on the other end almost um, this is the continuous loop on it this is something that I, I would be changing um, if I you know if this it looks like it's going to be a hammock I may use a lot I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it um, it could take place of my old uh, hammock that was my go-to anyhow I will be changing this to some am steel the uh, ridge line definitely is going to be changed. Uh, now, I, you know, I, I've installed a lot of ridge lines in hammocks, and I always use this stuff in, there, in, in it. This doesn't quite feel as, as, as uh, quality as the stuff that I normally use, but, you know, if I'm going to use this hammock myself all the time, I think I'm going to go with uh, the proper ridge line in this thing. You can see any other end. we get the same stuff here. There are 10 of these. Like I said earlier, there are 10 of these little loops in here, and that should be enough. Uh, the problem might be that you may need to be hooking it up in this area here, which is what I would have had, would have had it done with this before. And, and I just added the uh, uh, loops on the tree up there, or the pole in this case. But you just have to keep looping it till you get it to the spot where it was just what you wanted. Very nice looking uh, clips for your uh, under quilt and what have you. And we all fight these under quilts under these things. And... Um, this is, this is going to be a big help for, for some of us. And pull outs. Let me crawl inside the thing and I'll take you in and we'll have a look inside. All right, get myself inside this thing. As you can see, perfectly flat lay. Plenty of room side to side. And of course, with 11 feet long, that's a long trek up to that end of the hammock. There's plenty of room there. The netting stays up very nicely away from me. Get my phone and glasses up in the first line organizer here. And you can see this little, little bit of extra material here. And I would imagine that they are very concerned about the... Uh, Ridge line. If somebody were to extend this thing out a little bit more to try to uh, take some of the sag out of it, that you would definitely tear the netting, and they, they've made that quite clear. And I think that the, by doing what they've done here, it doesn't impede upon the uh, uh, comfort and use of the hammock, but it does maybe save this netting from a, from a 
little bit of problems. Um, and we are using paracord, and paracord stretches, we all know that, so they may have compensated for that. I know when I use a paracord for a ridge line, I always do it with an adjustable ridge line, and I that way I can compensate for the uh, stretch and what have you. And when you get in it, it, uh, it may be one place, and then shortly thereafter it stretches a little bit, and then it kind of dials itself in. Material is very, very comfortable. I mean, it's comfortable on the skin and what have you. The netting is a little little rough um, it it's not like the netting that I had on the uh, Skyloft and the uh, um, Etrol uh, hammock I had though when they called the bat that stuff was uh, close was much finer weave on it and it also had a smoother feel to it now this is not uncomfortable in any way shape or form but it just does not feel quite the same as as some of the other ones did uh, again you know you can legal go so far with these things or the price has to go up but this is totally adequate and it's going to do a very good job and it does have the, the, the netting does give some stretch which is good um, it, instead of tearing it has some give and that's what you want but it is very wide very comfortable I'm lying with my head uh, right feet left and I'm going to switch over here and go the other way which Seems odd for me, but and just as flat, just as comfortable. So they've they've done they've done a heck of a job in cutting this out, designing it, getting it for a nice flat lay. It's uh, it's a symmetrical hammock, and uh, it comes out working for people who sleep both ways. Now I just turned my head from the direction I had it. My feet are now where my head was, and on the other direction in this hammock, and everything's just as comfortable as it uh, was the other way. So you, you can put your head in any of the four corners of this thing, your feet in the other four corners, any of them, and you'll be just fine. Um, no calf ridge in it. Nothing. I don't feel any of that. Nothing. I don't feel not a not a not even the slightest. Uh, it's just well designed, and it's amazing that. Everything is just such as it is. I mean, it's usually you have to get in these things and have to do something with them. And I've had many hammocks that I've had to go in and do a little tweaking here and there. But I, I, I'm not having to do anything. I don't think I need to do anything to this thing other than just change the quality of the uh, continuous loops and the ridge line. But I'm going to put it right back to the specs they had it. This thing is just very comfortable just the way it is. As you can see, we now have the top cover off. And it does come completely off, which is, as you can see... Totally separate from the hammock. And the nice thing about having something like that is it makes this thing a very good potential candidate for making a uh, top cover for this thing, or an over cover, whichever you want to call it, that will uh, just use material and would be a great wind block and also a retention of heat inside the hammock. The ridge line, you can see the ridge line here, it is made of uh, a paracord, as I had said earlier. You can see where it's tied in here. It wraps around right underneath my thumb. Closer look at the, the this thing's really lightweight. This rich on organizer is just it's like a feather. It's not like it's not even there. Will it hold up? You know, it's tough to say. This thing like it's sewn okay, but it it's just I don't know. It's going to be tough to say, but it's it's nice to have. And on the other end, we got the ridge line tied in here the same way as you can see right there. Get a much better view now of the inner hooks here, or whatever these little things are going to be used for. I mean, like bet you could tie a, a, a pillow here, keep the pillow up there or what have you, put a bag up there, put stuff in it. Um, if you've got a, a, a pad that reaches up that far, I imagine you could probably tie it in there. But we also have them down here, 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 and here. So any place is a pullout or an underquilt hook, you're going to find that it has it on the inside. Up inside here, let's see what's up inside here. We've got just the zipper and the bag. I don't see anything else up there. Let's see if there's anything in this end. 
you're seeing this with me at the same time. It's the first time I've seen anything up in there. There's nothing else up inside there. But that's the way that's set up. Now, getting this thing off was not really too difficult. Getting it back on might show a little bit of little difficulty. As you can see, we've got two lengths here on the zippers as they come out. One side has a little Velcro on it. The other side does not. And they are different lengths here where when you put the the net back on, this net then kind of overlaps on the inside. And I imagine that's going to be to uh, help keep it bug proof, seal it up. Let me set this thing, this camera up on a stand and I'll try to uh, install the zippers and we'll just see how difficult it is. As you can see, here's the two size zippers. One extends beyond it and it has the Velcro. So you can basically tell which side it's going to attach to based on the Velcro alone and the length. Both of the long ones come together. Also, the zipper is sewed in under the bug net, so that that will also tell you what, what uh, position to put it on. Now what I do is take it and just lay it into the hammock here, as you can see. I'm going to uh, let it lie in there so I have a little control over it. Let's get around the other side here and I'll try to put it together. like you would any other zipper in a shirt or a pair of pants or what have you. Slide this thing down in here all the way. And, well, that seemed to be simple enough. And I would snap that on there to hold it in place. The side of the zipper here. This one might be a little tougher because it's kind of buried down in there. I get my hands out of the way so you can see. Yeah, like I can say it is a little tougher. Imagine after I've done it two or three times, it'll probably be much easier to deal with. Yeah, I got that seated. There we go. So it's not really too bad. That's not too bad at all. It really is. It's pretty simple. Toughest part, just getting used to it up here. It is one zipper that goes all the way around the hammock. Right, let me get this camera in my hands. Let me get a little closer look here. This is a zipper, and it is just a, one full zipper. It runs a full length both ways, back and forth, so that makes it probably about a 22-foot zipper. That's a pretty, pretty good size zipper. Um, the only problem with it is if you want to get in and out on this side, you're fine, but if you were inside and had to get out, reach the outside for any reason, you couldn't do so. You'd have to zip this all the way up and around and bring it back out on the other side there. Um, you could do that, though. I mean, it's not a, not a big issue. I would see that the biggest problem would be that if you wanted to... Uh, get your um, under quilt adjusted or something and you had to reach around you'd either have to roll the zipper all the way around or you have to crawl out or what have you um, I know I sometimes just grab the grab it through the the material here and just reached out grab the thing kind of lift it up and then let, let the material fall in place um, but it would have been nice if they had been able to put the zippers on both sides but you know, again as I've said earlier the price the price on these things is uh, uh, kind of dictating what what they can do as far as giving us uh, options and they've given us some pretty nice stuff for the price
Now here's a white piece of paper behind the netting and you get a chance to see just how uh, close the netting the holes are, how small they are, or how large they are, depending on where you're at. Here in California, this will be just fine for us. Uh, for a lot of places around the country, it'd be fine. If you're in an area that's going to have those little no see and I've never seen one of those things, but I've heard some bad things about them, I couldn't tell you whether this is going to be enough to keep them out or not. Um, I've got uh, two other hammocks that I recently picked up that have uh, much, much tighter um, bug netting on it than this does. This is adequate though. I mean, it is adequate for, for my needs and for most of you guys' needs. The only way I could tell you to find out is to have a look at it. Okay, let's re measure this ridge line, see what we've got here. And it is 108 inches even, nine feet long. The bag is attached, as you see in a lot of the economy priced hammocks um, but it's sewn on here a lot better than I've seen on them a lot of the economy hammocks I've pulled on them tugged on them a little bit and they all come apart this is well sewn on there it's not going anywhere um, I may end up taking it off in the end and uh, having a hole put in the bottom here turn this into a bishop's bag and have it mounted up on the ridge on the uh, suspension out there is there a little and if you notice down here, it says San Diego, California. I just today received an email from uh, them because I had asked them, are they in Florida? Are they in San Diego? Apparently they were here in San Diego and they moved to Florida. But he was saying it's hard to get uh, rid of all these things with a San Diego on it. And they do respond quickly when you, when you try to get in touch with them. That's another good thing about it. It's a real person there. There's somebody here in the United States responding, and it's actually the people who run the company. It's not just some flunky sitting uh, at a desk in a foreign country. Now, here's a closer look at the material. It's a, it's a very nice material. And this is just a little thing on the top here, but they, even, they could have skimped up there, and they did they put good stuff all around. This is very nice material, very, very nice. Um, it's supposed to be equivalent of uh, 1.7, so it's a little firm, but not too firm, and I actually feel pretty comfortable in it. I, I like a firm one, and I could have actually accepted something a little firmer than this was, but this is very comfortable. Well, now that we've had a good chance to see all the components on it, let's see just how well these components were installed, how the workmanship is. You see we've got triple stitching around here and it is all perfect the tricky stitching right here where this where this goes on so the cover is done very very well this stuff is stitched very nicely in here Stitching on the zipper is great, and it's captured down inside here. Nice and straight, true lines all the way. There is no frailed ends hanging out any place. Now, this is one of the places that people had complained about that I've seen a couple complaints about is the stitching on the uh, pullouts and the loops inside and the... Uh, uh, quilt on quilt holders and they look real good to me now there's a little bit right here of material it's a, just a frayed end that's kind of coming out from the, when the material was cut it looks like they didn't heat cut cut it but other than that that's all buried inside anyway it's not going to be an issue this is one place we've seen a lot of trouble and I showed you earlier in the video but this thing is sewn in well and we all know that on these weren't expensive hammocks when they put those bags on it's like an afterthought one or two pulls on the uh, pull drop strings here to tighten the thing up and they come apart this one's not going to all right 
Now what they've done here is they've taken the net and just folded it over and then they've sewn it, they've stitched through it. Stitching looks good all the way and even. <clears throat> Same on the underside. And you can see where, here's the material of the netting. And generally, it's pretty consistent all the way around with like an eighth of an inch overhang all the way down and around. So they're pretty consistent there too. Now this here is just kind of an afterthought. I can already see that this is starting to come apart right here. So this is not going to hold up. Although I may take that off and have uh, the wife re-sew all that before we put it back in. But I do have another one I can put up there of my own. It all looks great. I don't really see any problems with it anywhere. I am impressed. No, it looks good. It looks very, very good, and I'm very, very pleased with it. So there it is. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Very nice hammock. Very, very nice. Um, when I put this thing up first, I crawled right in it. Didn't have to make any adjustments, anything. It was just perfect, right out of the bag. I mean, you, you can't ask for more than that. The company is an American company, and when it come, came with me, it came with, uh, if, believe it or not, some instructions on how to hang it and precautions. Came with a sticker, and this is really kind of nice. It's it's sweet, it's cool, it's a little thing, but it's a business card, and William, the founder of the company, actually hand wrote a little note on the back here thanking us for buying it and uh, asking if we wouldn't uh, leave a review, which I will be doing. Now, on this thing here, I did want to point out that I did pay for this myself. As you know, a lot of the hammocks I get, they come into me uh, from various companies and ask me to, to look at them. And some of them get reviewed, some of them don't. Others just want my critique to them so they can either improve their products or what have you. But I did buy this one because I was so impressed with it. And it's, it's going to probably be my, my uh, go-to hammock. The only thing that I could see that I would have to change on this, and I wouldn't change the specs as much as I would just change the product, and that is the ridge line and the uh, uh, continuous loops on the end. And actually, um, from Mammoth Gear, I got that in the mail today, and I've got my parts all ready to go, so they're ready to go on it. Um, I don't buy the, vendor, the cottage vendor's hammock because, quite frankly, I can't afford them. That's the first thing. And secondly, I mean, I can't, 200 bucks, that's pretty much what you're going to spend, and I can't afford that. Secondly, I get so many of these hammocks from companies that I have to test that I wouldn't really be using it very often. It's the same with this. This won't, probably won't get used near as often as I would like, but I don't get a chance to use them often, so um, I'd be wasting my money buying a real high-dollar one. I started out with a real high-dollar one, and I had some trouble with it, and I promise I'd never get another high-dollar one again after I found a few cheap ones that uh, were almost as comfortable. And I do um, want to point out, um, I wrote to these people before I purchased it asking them um, if this was an American made item or if this was a Chinese made item or what have you and I got no response from them but in their defense they were actually out at a, at a hangout in the, in the uh, southwestern part of the country I think it is and uh, they're quite busy and you know they probably get lost in shuffle and eventually I may get some answers from them but buying the hammock it is made in China Okay, it is a Chinese made hammock. My understanding is it's designed here in the United States and sold by an American company, but it is made in China. However, I have a hammock, like I just said, and it's made in China. Sold out of a company in uh, Canada, but it is made in China, and nobody bad mouths those things. So, this, this thing here is every bit as good as that uh, hennessy I have. Uh, maybe, maybe better. It's more comfortable. I can tell you that this is more comfortable than the Hennessy. So, it, does it really matter who's pushing the pedal with their feet and running this stuff through the the um, machine with their hands? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's quality material and they're doing the job right. If you cannot afford to buy from the the cottage vendors, and I do say if you can't afford to buy them, and if I could, buy from them first because they will make it exactly the way you want it. But if you can't afford that and you need something ready-made off the rack type thing, this is going to be your answer. Anyhow, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time around.